kid you not, dude puts it in reverse. And, and five seconds later. And all your friends know <laughs> that you think like this, by the way. They... Oh yeah, <laughs> they know, they know, and they they they're careful what they say around me, and like put put it in reverse, and we slam into the wall, <laughs> and I immediately I immediately am like, you know, mad at myself. I'm like, dude, I I, I I'm sorry, Wade. I I did do that. That's my. Fault. I reversed your car into the wall. All right, my friends, welcome back to The Morning Takeaway. I've got a special guest today, the first guest on the show. He's actually going to be quite a recurring guest. Um, He's a friend of mine from high school. We played high school baseball together. And when he went to college, he actually built a brand that did $400,000 in sales while in college. Um, Since then, he's now working with a company called Buzzbaster that he started. Um, and I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about Buzzbaster and kind of managing influencers and the influencer marketing side of things. I want to welcome Brandon Johns. Hello, Brandon. What's going on, dude? <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, everybody? I'm super excited to be here. Uh, yeah, and I'll just talk about Buzzbaster. It's funny how it's actually kind of how we kind of got back together after you know spending time playing baseball together and spending some years apart, but. Buzzbaster essentially is an influencer app. It basically manages brand ambassador programs, influencer marketing programs for businesses. And it was actually built after we had built the brand to you know over $400,000 in sales. It was a fashion brand and we were building it all on the back of influencers and we just had no way to manage these influencers. It was all on Google Sheets. We were running discount codes, like tracking the discount codes, the commission payouts, doing all of it manually. And so we said, there's got to be another way. So we built this application. It's a Shopify application. And um, just actually wrapping up the numbers this year, we've helped brands generate over $5 million um, in sales strictly through influencers. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm super proud to be a part of that. Um, But it's actually funny, Nick. We actually uh, bumped into each other. Hadn't seen each other, what, like seven years? Oh, at least, yeah. And it was, it, <laughs> yeah. I guess it was, because, I mean, the last time that we were kind of hanging out was in high school, messing around outside in the freezing cold. I can remember hanging out with JD, Sprints. the hitting coach. And, <laughs> yeah. But, and then, and it's like everything, the conversation only revolved around baseball, school, and just being high school kids. And mm-hmm. fast forward, what, seven years, and we bump into each other on New Year's, May or not, may or may not have been uh, drinking a little water, and <laughs> we start talking about business, and that was kind of at the time that my, you know, the social media was starting to kind of come about, um, and I hadn't mm-hmm. quite wrapped my head around it. But then we said, "Hey, let's do some business together." So we started hopping on calls, and I think this was at the time that I was at what six thousand followers, four thousand followers on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, man. We we actually started hopping on calls in February. Yeah. Like, I think that was probably our first, like, call. So, like, right, like, a year to day, essentially, you know? So, it's been a year since then. Yeah, you only had, like, 5,000 followers or something. Yeah, and I guess... So, it's been been quite a year. And at (laughs) at that time, I guess, TikTok was kind of the... At that point in time, for me, it was very, like, okay, we can do something with it, right? And not necessarily Mm -hmm. when you say, like, do something with it. It doesn't have to be, like, monetizing. But, like, how do you create value for people? And I think that's where we see eye to eye really well um, in the sense of like, how are we going to create value for people um, in the long run and do it on a genuine level? Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of like on that topic, I think I I can't, part of what I want to get into today is the influencer growth and like starting out and like how you have done that in the business sense and on my end of things, like helping me out um, and the kind of the behind the scenes thing. So uh, tell me a little bit more like working I guess, from the influencer side of things, like marketing wise, like where your mindset's at. Yeah, uh, for sure. I think that's probably why we've been like such a good match um, is because everything that I saw when I was in college and I was trying to build brands and make money, et cetera, drive more sales, it was like, how can I be creative in my marketing, right? And like everyone's doing Facebook ads, everyone's running Instagram ads, whatever. How can I be creative? And it started to revolve around how can I get community, people involved. And so that's where I kind of started focusing on these influencers and started reaching out to influencers at first, just DMing all day long, DMing different influencers. And it was funny, I went after, cause like my mindset is like, 
everybody, you know, like the only one that's only person that's going to drive sales is going to be someone that has hundreds of thousands of followers or millions of followers. And that was my mindset going into it. And then I started to realize that it's not about the number of followers you have. It's about how engaged your followers are. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then it's switched from finding the high, like the largest accounts to how can I get everyone involved and no matter how many followers they have, they can still make an impact in my business. And so then it was all just a people to people level, like make them feel like they're making a difference for my business, but also they're you know making a difference for themselves and their own personal brand as they're starting to build it out. So that's like what I took into it. And then I realized, hey, Nick's over here starting to get TikTok rolling a little bit just ran back into you obviously we vibed you know if we didn't vibe in high school we wouldn't be yeah. talking to each other um but and then i realized like okay like now that i understand like what the brands are looking for like i know exactly like how to like help you you know make yourself appealing and attractive to the brands but also build your brand not just off brand deals right. because at the end of the day you don't want to be making money just off brand right. deals you want to actually provide genuine value yeah. you know and you want to you want to be connected with the people that are like I always say, without my followers and the audience and the engagement that they keep coming back to, um, th there is nothing, right? Like without the genuine mm -hmm. people that are behind me. And I think that that's the one thing that you see with a lot of these, like the influencers, and I, I put it in quotes because I don't really love the word influencer. I think that's, that's yeah. another topic <laughs> just in the sense of like leaving it, leaving an impact on the world, That that's influence. Um, but Mm -hmm. And there's also different ways to influence people, right? And we're getting a little deep here, but uh, we, we can dive Love into it. that later. Um, but, <laughs> you know, in the sense of, uh, you know, being as humane as possible, I think that's probably my biggest goal and something that you said about, you know, building together is providing that level of genuineness and authenticity. And that, like whether it's like in, being an influencer or building brands, whatever it is, like just in life in general, like that's kind of a ticket. Um, you know, and I think as I started to get onto Instagram more and to kind of transfer over from TikTok to Instagram, like we both kind of saw like, Hey, like just be yourself, uh, provide personality and we'll let it kind of run from there while also having this bigger vision of, what do we want to build? And I mm. think in your background with business and my background, just like obviously athletics and whatever, and now in the influencer world, it's become um, more more based around the value that you provide to people on a consistent basis. I think I'm, it's a little redundant, mm. but... I guess, I don't know. I don't really know where I'm going with that, but <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, it's cool. I, I actually, I was just wondering how, cause I never really asked you this question. Like obviously we, when we started, you know, getting on calls and stuff, we were just like, all right, what do we need to do? Like let's action items, action items, action items. But obviously it's been 12 months now and you've obviously grown a ton. Yeah. So did you have something and I don't know if you can think off the top of your head, but did you have something when you were, you know, say February of last year, that you thought about like the influencer space or like what you were trying to build compared to that might be different than what you think now and what you're trying to do? You know, I think, I think it kind of goes back to that thing where you see these in influencers on Instagram, whatever, like they have so many followers and whatnot. And it's like the first thing that everyone thinks is like, Oh, that guy's rich. Right. Like, and that's like, mm -hmm bigger picture like obviously we're all out here trying to make a living for ourselves and um create life right like how, how do we make a living and how do you build on your vision um i think obviously that was in the back of my head and where do you take it but i think bigger picture was more like how am i going to take this platform and integrate everything that i believe in um on a genuine level in life in sports in whatever it might be mindset and keep it consistent. I think that's the hardest, that's been the hardest part. Sorry, there's a hair flying around the room. Um, <laughs> but I guess from like from a year ago today to now where I'm at, I don't think, you know, I knew it was going to grow. I didn't think it was going to grow at the rate that it has. Uh, but for that, I'm, 
super grateful. Um, you know, you can't discredit the awesome people that engage every day. Um, but as far as like vision wise, I guess I don't really, I didn't, I, it was so unclear and it's still unclear because it's such a new world, right? Like if you look back 10 years ago and I mean, social media wasn't as crazy it is, as it is now. Um, so to answer your question, I think it was very unknown and unclear. Um, and now I sit in a position where I know how I want to help people. And that's kind of why we're working together. Um, and mm -hmm. how we're going to build that and create value for people on a consistent basis. Um, so yeah, one thing I wanted to, I actually wanted to pull out there that you said, um, was you did, you were surprised with how much it grew. Obviously you're grateful for that, yeah. but w what I want to point out is, and you may not like, you may overlook it is the consistency over the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I know you said like being consistent, but because you grew so much because of the consistency, right? Like it, and it's not like in a, in a daily basis, right? Where you're like just sitting there like, okay, today I've got to do this. Like, it, and then on a weekly basis, even a monthly basis, it doesn't even seem like you're making that much progress. Mm -hmm. But now looking back, it's 12 months, you've made a ton of progress. And so that's like with everything, Absolutely. you know? So creating consistency over the year's time, I think a lot of that has to do with every night planning out my day the next day. Um, and this is something I talk about all the time with getting 1% better each day and, you know, really stacking the little things so that when you look back and whether it's in your fitness journey, your financial journey, whatever it is, you're doing something right now so that in the future you look back and you're like, wow, you know, you're, you're, you're delaying the instant gratification and in a year you're like, oh wow, this is exactly what I wanted it to be. Right. So you, you take, you take your fitness journey, for example, or actually let's go with financial. I think it's a little easier in numbers wise. If I take a dollar a day is, is anybody will spend a dollar a day. You throw that into a savings account every single day. You don't, you don't ever see it. Well, you look up in a year and it's 365 bucks, right? You, you don't, you don't think of that as a $365 investment on day one. And compound is the same thing with anything you do in life, whether it's influencing and posting every day on Instagram and the um, engagement that comes with that or financial fitness, whatever. Um, and something I want to touch on with like this whole journey of influencing is, and the authenticity, authenticity of it is the fact that like a lot of the influencers don't really like take the time to engage. And I think that's the in my opinion, the biggest part of influencing and like, what does the word influencing mean? It's leaving an impact. Like I said, right. How do you leave an impact on somebody if you're not going to actually talk to them and engage with them? If they're taking time out of the day to engage with you, you should take time out of your day to engage with them. So I take an hour, two hours replying to comments, DMS as much as I possibly can, because I want to try to know these people and talk about compounding, like now as the growth has continued, it's a little harder to keep up with direct messages. Um, but from a standpoint that like, I, I still have, I mean, I take at least, I mean, it, it takes a long time now, but it's fun. You, you create these relationships with people and I mean, there's multiple people that I connect with and like, will reach out if I haven't heard from them in a while and Hey, how are you doing? And I think that on a long-term scale is like, that's the stuff that matters, like creating a relationship mm -hmm. and leaving an impact on somebody. And they're leaving an impact on me too. Like I, I care about some of these people that I might not ever meet. Um, so going back to your question about the, the vision in 12 months, um, I think that one of the biggest things at the core of all of that is my goal of helping people and leaving an impact. And mm -hmm. I knew that in 12 months, whatever I, I want to know that I do everything every single day to help somebody out there. If one person takes something away from what I say, I'm, I'm fulfilled. And, you know, so mm -hmm. kind of getting more into, I guess my philosophy, but you know, I don't want to digress here, but I, I do want to introduce this, uh, this topic, the podcast topics running list of notes that we have. Going <laughs> um, so in, so 
we're kind of doing this thing together, right? We, uh, you're kind of behind the scenes guy and excuse me while I look at my laptop, but we should have num we should have numbered these. Oh my goodness. These things. So, and I was just telling, telling you earlier, but like my friend asked me the other day, like, where do you think of these things? And I'm just, I'm just a weirdo. I, things happen to me in life and like looking for a reason to relate them to some kind of mindset or growth or whatever. Um, it's kind of like the conversation we were talking about yesterday and the law of attraction. And oh yeah, if you don't mind, talk on uh, talk on the law of attraction for a second. Yeah, we were we started talking about visualization. We I actually think we were talking about your uh, morning routine and um, visualizing your affirmations every morning. So I'm, I'm sure you could touch on that. But um, no, I started talking to you about like you know how I started in college. I really got into it and I actually it actually was back in baseball really when it first when I first started realizing like the power of visualization mm -hmm. like it would be it's kind of crazy but it, like to sat like to say this and you may if you're listening be like there's no way but it's not until it actually happens that you realize how powerful this is and like for example I played center field in baseball and every play I would visualize what's about to happen and I'd visualize, okay, this dude's about to hit a line drive over here to my right side. I'm gonna run, dive and catch, and then throw it in. You know, it would be, be good. And that would happen more times than not. And I would just be sitting there after the play, like just smiling, like I just did that. <laughs> like I actually made that happen I in my mind. <laughs> and yeah, and so that was like the first, like kind of like, okay, I can visualize where I'm gonna hit the ball. Like, like I, it actually is works. And then I started applying it to to business and just it kept practicing, you know, visualization and, you know, wanting good things to happen and visualizing myself already feeling that and having that happen until it started to get to a point where I kind of realized like I everything I actually think like can actually, you know, happen. And so, for example, the story I told you. Um, I was driving with my buddy. I was in the back seat of his car and we were pulling up into our parking garage and I don't know why I thought of this, but he pulls up and there's a parking spot he's about to back into. And before he even like has put the car into reverse, he, um, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, not, I'm not talking. I'm just in my mind. I'm like, man, it'd be kind of crazy if we just like, for some reason we just like slammed into the back of this wall. <laughs> and, um, I kid you not, dude puts it in reverse and, and five seconds later. And all your friends know <laughs> that you think like this, by the way, they, oh yeah, <laughs> they know, they know. And they, they, they're careful what they say around me and like put, puts it in the reverse and we slam into the wall <laughs> and I immediately, I immediately am like, you know, mad at myself. I'm like, dude, I, I, I I'm sorry, Wade. I, I did do that. That's my, fault. I reversed your car into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, you know, and there's a few other stories like that where it's like putting it into my mind of something and like actually visualizing it and like seeing it happen and it actually happening. And it just shows like, okay, you got to be careful what you put in your mind. But also like, if you've never practiced visualization, like you've never like thought about it and I'm sure you've visualize stuff mm -hmm. but you've never like put the correlation between like what's actually happening in your life um it may not be immediate you know like something like that but um there is a correlation between what's in your mind and what you experience in reality absolutely i think something you touched on in, yeah. in our conversation yesterday was like using that as something even in small situations like i'm gonna have like you're turning into a parking lot i will have a good parking spot mm -hmm. um you know little things like that i think that that's something that you said yesterday that's been like ringing in my brain and just throughout the day yesterday I was like just just thinking of little things right like uh, I can't remember this morning it, it, I think it goes back to the the whole idea that I talk about like when you talk out out loud and talking about being excited well you're kind mm -hmm. of in a way telling your brain and visualizing being excited right it's like that the whole idea of talking out loud and self affirmations and I think that goes a long way just I guess in anything in life, but like going back to the, the little things and like talking the law of attraction into existence. Um, that's a, it's a really interesting topic. And I don't want to say that I, I don't, I want to be careful when I say this. Cause I think that I, whenever I discovered the law of attraction, I really made a shift to like, be a little overboard on it, just like you, in the sense of like, mm -hmm. th this makes too much sense and I'm gonna live my life like this. 
And if you haven't mm-hmm. ever, if those of you listening, if you haven't ever done any research on the law of attraction, go on YouTube right now and type in the law of attraction. There's, mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly. There's one video on there that blew my mind. <laughs> I, yeah, just, I know. It's like an old prophet talking about it. I don't know. Anyways, but <laughs> it might've been Wayne Dyer. He talks about it a lot. Wayne Dyer. Um, but no, like what I like to, like, for example, my buddy, Sam, you know, Sam, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's big, big into real estate, et cetera. Like he's just all about, you know, achievement and stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, he's building businesses, et cetera. Um, but he never really visualized. And what I first started telling him was like, Hey man, like he, he would ask me, he's like, Hey, like, cause we went to college together. He's like, how come you just like, it doesn't seem like you're studying anymore, but you're over here getting better grades like all the time. Like in class, it doesn't seem like we're, you know, you know, any different in like what we're understanding the, the concepts. And I would tell him, I was like, dude, I, I'll sit there because I, I know the surroundings in the class. Right. And I'll sit there the night before when I'm laying in bed or whatever, like visualizing myself walk, like turning my test in and walking out feeling, because everyone has that feeling when you know, oh, I killed yep. it. I killed it. And every, before every test well, in college, everything that I would do, I would just be, hey, let me just picture myself walking out of that classroom, closing the door chest and feeling good and then looking at the surroundings, you know, and be like, oh, I feel it. And that's the feeling that I'm sure everyone has. And that's one of the things I tell people is like, that's one of the first things that you can start and like really understand like, oh, this kind of like clicks a little bit. This kind of working a little bit because you know that feeling, you know what Absolutely. I mean? And you got to feel it for it to really happen. And if you can feel like the both, like what you said with whether you feel good or bad, there's a body language that comes with that. When you walk out knowing mm-hmm. like, hey, I just killed that. You kind of walk with a little more pep in your step, chest up, smiling. Mm-hmm. Whereas, turn it in real slow, like ah, I don't, I don't, I didn't like that. Walk out with your, your shoulders <laughs> drooped and not feeling too hot, and it and it affects the rest of your day, right? And yep. I think that's the the next level of the law of attraction. And if you can, and the the whole little things thing, like if if you can stack up those little things and feel good each little thing talk about compounding and circling everything back and that we've talked about. It's like you can start to build a better day and a better life. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't start with a law of attraction. I don't know. Believe what you want to believe, but that's pretty powerful. I think it it definitely putting law of attraction aside, it definitely starts with your mindset, like going into it. Like, yeah, you're going to get what you look for. You know what I mean? Like if you're looking for a positive, like the positive things in life, you're going to, you're going to start seeing positive things. You're going to see the positive things, anything that happens, even though it might not be, you know, something great, but you're going to try to find the positive in that. Absolutely. Same thing. If you're looking at it negatively. Absolutely. So we, we kind of got off track right there. Talking about yeah, the sorry, pod, podcast topics, but I want you to I want you to roll through these podcast topics as we kind of wrap this thing up. Um, I want you to pick something off of here. We'll kind of do a little blip on, and then uh, mm-hmm. I've got this random word or question generator that I want to just generate a random question. It could be what's your favorite food or some deeper, higher level thinking. All right, my friends. So. We just had a little mishap with the first episode. We basically, it's the first episode. We're going to run into these things. So if you bear with us, we're going to roll on into where we were and pick up where we left off. So I'm going to let Brandon take the stage. Let's get it. Yeah, guys. So as you can see, Nick's got a new haircut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we, we. I wanted to ask you a question. So Dude. the question that I had was, you know, we talked about in the podcast how, you know, you grew so much in one year. Mm-hmm. And all that came down to, obviously, was you being consistent every single day. But the question is, for 365 days straight, how were you able to stay consistent? Because at the beginning, obviously, you weren't at where you are now. Mm-hmm. And you had to do those daily things, and it was all on you. Like, how did you like muster the strength and the consistency to do that every single day when a lot of people, you know, may just not even do that, may give up way earlier than where you're at now. Right. Yeah. I think, I think for a lot of people there, you kind of go through these ebbs and flows in life and in probably, you know, social media, whatever it is you do for a living. Like we all have those days where you wake up and you're like, wow, I don't really do this. But so I guess backing up a little, um, it's, it, it's a lot to do with my mindset on life and the little things. And I've done a previous podcast on that before. And 
the idea of stacking little things on top of each other and day by day saying, waking up with a purpose and knowing, hey, today I'm going to grow a little bit. If I get one more follower, if I get one more engagement with whoever it might be, well, over the course of 365 days, that's 365 more people that you get to impact. And on a daily basis, like I, I think, I think tying in the idea of the unknown is something that's super, I don't know if motivational is the right word for me, but in the sense that I, I think from my athletic background, there was always a sense of like, you always, you, you woke up, I actually heard it on a podcast the other day, when you, when you w- used to go to a field trip, you woke up every morning really, really excited. Why? Because you knew something new was going to happen to you and something fresh and it was, there was still a little bit of unknown tied to it, right? So for me, that's, that's kind of what it was as well um, and still is, but who am I going to impact today and who do I have the opportunity to engage with and even if I don't ever meet them, if I get to interact with them and have some kind of impact or vice versa because a lot of these people that I interact with, they have an impact on me as well. So I think to answer your question in more simple terms, it's just a day by day um, little by little, one percent change each day, and that's that's kind of my the compounding effect of life. That's that's really what it boils down to for me. So, if that answers your question, I'm not. Yeah, it definitely does, because I think a lot of people may be like, "Well, Nick, you know, the reason why you kept going was because you were getting you know followers every single day. You were getting that traction. You were seeing those results, mm-hmm. but." Can you, can you think of a time when, or maybe just it was at the beginning of the journey, because not every single day you were gaining hundreds of followers or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, maybe at the beginning when there wasn't any clear results, how did you, you know, stay motivated then, you know? I think, I think it's just going back to that same idea of who am I going to impact today? And it was that core group. I still have a core group of followers that interact with me on a daily basis and I've actually moved like some of them from my general messages to my primary messages because I've built relationships with these people, right? And it's that core group of people that's going to keep you going. And as I say this, I'm kind of having a revelation of life. It's like in your immediate life, what do you do on days that you are having really crappy days? You go to that core group of people and they help propel you through, right? It's there, There's a energy that's given off by those people and the, your closest loved ones and friends and wow, we're getting emotional, but I think the, I think the, uh, <laughs> the idea of knowing that you do have those people that are with you through the thick and thin and you are having some kind of an impact on them, you're, you're going to have that opportunity tomorrow. And with social media, like it, it's a, I feel very grateful to live in a time where like there is an algorithm that can help us, you know, reach more people and you never know who is going to reach out that next day. So sticking to the core, that's probably my answer for that. And cool. it's, it's cool seeing the, the impact you have on people. Right. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think that's uh you got to have the foundation and the core people around you, especially when you're taking risks or going out into the unknown, you know, when it's not comfortable mm-hmm. having somebody or some support group or something to lean back on. It's definitely key. Let's, uh, so on the, what about for you? So in, in the business, in the life of business, right, you might be running something that's, you see the numbers are being generated really well and everything's going great. And you're going to have, you're probably seeing physical charts of like, Oh, it's going up. We're doing awesome. Like the stock market. And then, wow, we're in the red. What is it that keeps you motivated in times of where you feel like this is the trend is going downward? Yeah. Um, you know, I think it, I think it comes back to like something I've learned not in business and that's actually like what I took from fishing. And so one of the things that I learned from fishing is when I'm out there and I'm trying to like, if you're, if you're trying to catch a fish and you go fishing, like your only goal is to catch that fish, then you're probably not going to have a great time. And you're not going to keep casting because, oh, I didn't catch a fish, didn't catch a fish, didn't catch a fish. Why would I keep casting? I'm not catching a fish. And But if you go out there and you truly enjoy the process of trying to catch the fish, then all that I'm going to do when I'm not catching a fish is I'm going to say, hmm, maybe I need to switch to this bait 
or maybe I need to switch to this tackle or whatever, or go fish somewhere else on a different spot of the lake. Like being, you know, what can I do differently to get the result that I'm after? And so in business, everything is just iterations. I, you, you are, you are doing small failures every single day. And those failures are leading you to figuring out, okay, that's not the way to do it, but it gets you one step closer to figuring out the right way to do it. And so when you're just failing and you're not seeing the top, the good results of like maybe, you know, the revenue goal that you have or the profit goal that you have, it's knowing that, hey, this iteration or this failure or this is all part of the process and it's just getting you to that goal. And if you enjoy that, that like pursuit, then you just are able to keep going. And that's just kind of what I've realized is like, that's my fuel, you know, being able to like enjoy that process. It's the, uh, it's the experience. And like Gary Vee talks about it a lot. He's like, I think I'm truly more in love with the idea of the game of business as opposed to the result that you get. So that's what, that, that's pretty, I like the, I like the fishing example too. Cause it's, when you think of fishing or anything that you do as a hobby, it's, it is the experience as a whole. And especially like what you were saying, like, Oh, you're going to change bait. You're going to change. You're going to go into the tackle box. Like you're going to go into my, what do you do in life? You're going to go into your box of skills and your right. And it's problem solution. I like that. That's, it's good stuff. All right. So, all right, let's, let's wrap this thing up as we kind of get going. We're going to do a random question generator. I got it pulled up right here. And, uh, it could, it could basically be any sort of question. I'm going to see that what this thing gives us. Wow. All right. So the first one, gosh, we're getting deep. It might be another 30 minutes. Uh, what are the top three characteristics you feel are important for a person? Wow. All right. Um, I think integrity is one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, What's your definition of integrity? Dang, did I just catch you off guard? Dude, I... I <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, you did. <laughs> um, dude, I would say just doing what's right. Like, doing what's right. Mm-hmm. That's how I would look at integrity. Keeping it simple. Um, and because I, I can't, I don't have some complex, cool definition. Yeah, um, cool. But then also, I think ambition. I think that's an important characteristic, no matter what it is. Like, mm-hmm. if you have something that you can... Like you want, you want to chase after, or like, I feel like that's something that, at least for me, feels like it provides happiness in my yeah, life. There's, there's a constant you know? drive and chase and reason. And then, operate. yeah, exactly. And then, so integrity, ambition, is that a characteristic? Can that, that ambition? I yeah, I think so. Why not? <laughs> It's a characteristic. Yeah, all right, cool. He's, you're, you're a very ambitious person. Yeah, that's a characteristic. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I'd say my third one. Mm, for the third one, I'd say an optimist. I like that. Optimistic. Being positive. Being able to see the positive, even when it seems like there's no positive in anything. I think if you have those three things, that's, I mean, that's a pretty solid person. I was building a person right now. That's a, <laughs> just stacking a person together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just build a, build a bear person. <laughs> um, we just built Brandon. <laughs> so what about you? What, what do you think your three characteristics would be? Hmm, the first one that comes to my mind is telling the truth. So being trustworthy. I think that's a very fundamental principle in life that not only does it it's not only does it reveal a lot, it's very, it's, it's easy. Telling the truth is easy. It's very black and white. It's a, it's black or white, yes or no. Right. And typically if you don't tell the truth, it's going to lead to more problems down the road. So I would say being trustworthy, I would say, I want to say having empathy, being empathetic is empathetic. Yeah. Having empathy, being able to show other people and relate to other people. God, no, I want to, you know what? I'm going to group vulnerability in there with empathy. I think those two kind of go hand in hand. Um, and then probably the third one, my brain keeps going to just being a good person, but I think all of these things are part of being a good person. We're going to go trustworthy, vulnerability, and kindness. There you go. 
just be kind. Being kind will generate relationships, connections. When you put good energy out in the world, the world wants to give you back good energy. I wish we could. Just, I think we should just add six. That'd be a, that, if we could add six into one person. That'd be that'd be very ideal. No, I think we just built a superhero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. With all six of those. <laughs> but all right. Well, with that said, I think uh, I think we're gonna wrap this thing up. I appreciate your time, Brandon. Before we go, where can people find you? Connect with you on social media if they want to talk to you, reach you, say hello, and pick your brain a little. Yeah, I had a, had a super fun time. Uh, you can actually follow me on Instagram at Brandon C. Johns, and I'm sure we'll link that out into the description. Follow me, guys. I look forward to If you like these conversations, this is all I'm all about it. So hit me up. Getting deep. Good deal. Cool. And with that said, hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I know that gets a little tedious, but it does help, and it's part of this whole YouTube thing. So I appreciate you. With that said, have an awesome day, and don't forget to smile.